All right, what's up, owls? This is uh, Mr. O with the second part of soil flip notes, which is going to be soil conservation. Um, this is 62.4. In your TOC, it's going to be number 27, soil conservation. And we are going to do this on the sheet that I gave you. There's going to be a part we're going to leave blank, and we're going to add something to the back. So the beginning says, how does land use affect soil? And that is humans can either harm or protect soil. So the choices that we make will either do good or bad to soil. Um, soil is a very valuable resource. It takes a very long time for it to get uh, re uh, neutralized or new with new nutrients and minerals. So we have to protect it. And um, but we often do things that will harm it. So we're going to talk about first three ways humans harm soil and on your plate on your paper that I gave you, you have farming, construction, development, and mining. Each of those have about more than three, but we're going to focus on three um, ways that humans harm it when they farm. So when you farm, you can lead to soil loss. Uh, farmers often use fertilizers, which could affect the animals that live there, and they also can create pollution. And most importantly, they can remove vegetative cover to farm because they're removing plants, which is vegetative cover. Construction development also has that remove vegetative cover. Um, which is interesting. You'll see that one in all three. It also leads to soil loss, which you will also see in all three. And then construction development could get into water, uh, soil into waterways and harm organisms that live in those nearby waterways because they're moving dirt that normally was not meant to be moved. And last is mining. Um, once again, you have leads to soil loss. You have removed vegetative cover because you're going to remove plants to get to the mine. But also it increases chemical weathering that causes pollution in that area. So in all three, it leads to soil loss and removes vegetative cover, and each one has a unique one with it. Like I said, there is more ways that we harm it in these three ways, but these are the three we're going to focus on in sixth grade. There are ways humans can protect soil, and they're all farming practices. Um, there's five different farming practices, as you can see these on your uh, notes that I gave you. And here's what each means. Crop rotation is kind of basically means what it says. They're going to rotate the crops each year um, in different plants. So if you keep planting the same thing in the same spot, you're going to take the, um, the nutrients and minerals and good things out of that soil that a corn plant, for example, needs. And the big thing about crop rotation, it maintains soil fertility. Conservation tillage or plowing. Conservation means less tilling or plowing. This is reducing the amount of times you plow a year, which also helps prevent soil loss, because you saw the three ways it um, could harm it. One of them was always soil loss. This helps prevent it. Terraces also helps prevent soil loss, and it actually works with erosion as well, like you learned in fifth grade. Terraces are flat, step-like areas built on hillsides, so when the rainwater runs down a hill, it doesn't take all the dirt with it. This will actually keep the dirt on the hillside, and we'll look at examples like that in class. We have contour plowing, which is the practice of plowing in curves. Contours means curves. This also prevents soil loss and erosion as well. So terraces and contour plowing actually do the same thing. And then wind breaks has the same benefit as conservation tillage. It prevents soil loss. And this is when you put plants as walls, like trees and walls, so they can prevent the wind from it's breaking the wind up so the wind doesn't take the soil on farms. There's a thing that says tools and technology used to learn about soil, and we will talk about those in class on your sheet, but we're going to go on to the back of your paper, and you need to learn a little bit about the rock cycle. So on the back, please complete this table. There's three types of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Here's the definitions of those rocks. The definitions are, um, give both how they're created and how they're formed. So make sure you have these definitions for each set of rocks. And then, if you did not know, it's called the rock cycle because it actually cycles. They can always change into each other back and forth. They can go from sedimentary to igneous to metamorphic. We read about this in our rock magazine, but you need to have this in your notes. So make sure you include the definitions as well as this diagram in the back of your note sheet. All right, that's it for this set of flip notes.